Ladies and gentlemen, my name is ASC Praise, and you are watching Praise TV, the place where we discuss all things Protoss as it relates to my favorite game, StarCraft II. Now, before we start, I would love to give a special shout out and thank you to everybody who's supported and subscribed thus far to my channel. In the last week, I've been able to raise more than three to four thousand unique viewership, and we're only two videos deep, guys. That really speaks to the quality of the StarCraft lovers worldwide. And I'm truly humbled by your appreciation of my content and even the critiques. You guys are freaking awesome. With that being said, I've been through a lot when it comes to keyboard shopping. I'm dang near obsessed with keyboards of all kinds, and I want to help every gamer get the best keyboard for their specific interests. This video will put perspective on what to look for in a great keyboard of all price points, types, and how to know what will work best for your gameplay experience. From the broke man to the baller, this video is the pit stop to getting an enlightened perspective for your quest in finding your new potential keyboard. This episode is the perfect keyboard for every gamer. Let's go ahead and dive into our menu here on your right. We are first going to talk about why mechanical keyboards, the ultimate guide to picking the perfect keyboard for you, we're going to look at my keyboard history and see everything I've purchased in my past and what led me to being here and knowing as much as I do about keyboards. I'll give you guys some of my recommendations to some of the top keyboards out in my opinion right now. Then we'll go into our bonus section and talk about the broke gamer. Listen, if you don't have any money for mechanical keyboards, um, this is still the place to be because I'm going to show you some healthy, safe, cheap alternatives to mechanical keyboards that will pretty much solve a lot of your issues in gaming uh, when it comes to mechanics, and they're really awesome. Then we'll go ahead and talk about my favorite keyboard of all time. What keyboard is Praise using right now? Uh, a little selfless plug to one of the greatest keyboards I've ever seen on the market. And then we'll recap through all of that and, you know, give some special announcements. So, guys, people might be asking, well, ASC Praise, what is so dang special about the mechanical keyboard? Well, the first thing is the transformation from a plastic and rubber membrane to the metal to plastic mechanism for key clicks. Why is this important? Well, this leads to consistency in key clicks. Most games these days, especially in RTS, require rapid key clicking, and the more consistent responses from your keyboard, the more consistent your gameplay performance will be. Also, you have the ability to pick resistance levels or switch mechanisms in the keys, which we will discuss later. You have customizable keycaps. There are also replaceable keycaps with color customization, which are also modifiable. You can have different keycap types and interchange them. And then you also have features, which include key bindings, lighting effects, wrist rests, and extra plugins such as USB or headphone jacks on the keyboard. Now, it's important to notice that competitive and pro gamers usually prioritize switch types before any of the other features of a keyboard, whereas casual gamers usually prioritize features over switch types. Most people want both, but certain things hinder the ability to do this, such as money limitations, not all keyboards will work for you, you may not have stores nearby that sell them, even online purchases are not always viable because of the shipping prices and other skepticism. What's unique about my experience, guys, is that I've not only purchased a ton of keyboards, but I live near an electronic warehouse where most of the mechanical keyboards are out on display. So I can try out more than about 20 keyboards at any given time in one place. You know, I'm super thankful for this, but I understand not many people have this kind of resource, and that's another reason why I'm making this video, to save you a ton of time. Okay, now let's dive into the good stuff. What should you be looking for in a keyboard? First, we're going to go over switch types. These are the very basic switch types in a range of low resistance to high resistance, and they're not all of them. I believe there's a few other specialty um, key switch mechanisms, but these are the most popular that you'll see today in gaming. We have red, which is the lightest resistance, meaning it takes the least amount of pressure to push this key down. 
We have blue, which would be probably your low medium, and it also has a different clicking method mechanism in which your keyboard will make a sound somewhat like this. You know, these are some of our loudest keyboards out there. They have some of the highest pitch in their sound, and they're very distinct when you see a blue switch keyboard. Then we have brown, my absolute favorite, which would be about a mid to mid high range. Uh, key switch. It's one of your more stealthier but mid-grade key switches. And then we have black, the heaviest resistance. And the switch type on this is a lot smoother. It doesn't have the click in the same way as the blue switch. You can notice here in the way that the mechanism works that it's a little more stealthy, a little more smooth, but it does have a high level of resistance. Now I went ahead and put the old key switch mechanisms up here on the top left so you can see the difference between the membrane inside, uh, the plastic on plastic but it's under a metal switch versus a rubber uh, or on the second picture the plastic to plastic switch um, so you guys can kind of see the evolution there and believe it or not the right switch makes all the difference let me give you an example medium to large fingers and hands may usually go better with a medium to high level resistance because you have bigger hands and it's more equal to your natural comfort level when you press a key down Whereas someone with a delicate or thinner hand slash fingers may size up better with a red or blue switch keyboard that has a lower level of resistance. These aren't absolutes, but these are common things to process through when buying a keyboard. Also notice the coaster stabilizer and the cherry stabilizer on the bottom left. One is sturdier than the other. Again, not all switches are made equal. And you notice the difference between the stabilizers is one has a metal hinge in there, whereas the other stabilizer, to actually get a key click, you have to push down all three there. So they have to build the keycap in a way that's a lot more balanced, whereas the other one kind of has like um, a certain level of resistance in the metal strap. And I've even played with keyboards sometimes where when you pop the key off, that thing falls off and it's very delicate. I don't usually recommend it, um, but you know, it is what it is. So you can also get, uh, notice on the middle there, keycap rings, which silence louder switches uh, with louder sound. Um, if you put these under the keycap and then assemble the keycap to your, your baseboard, they'll silence a lot of the sound, or at least the sound that the key will make will be of a much lower frequency. You see, that's another issue when gaming, is that some of your lighter sounding keys, like the red and the blue, since they're so loud, that may affect the time of day that you play. Like if you, have, if you live with people, they might be louder at night and things like that. So that's another negative that maybe these O-rings might solve for you if you still wanted to get a red or blue switch keyboard. Another thing to look for is the sturdiness of the keys and baseboard. Some keys are made with better materials, point blank. This is a major reason why it's best to be able to test out your keyboard before the purchase if possible. Next, you want to look at the company. Are they a starter company or are they well established? Because that might affect the type of resources they can buy for the keyboard and the price point that they set on the keyboard itself. The next thing you want to look at is the reviews of the keyboard. Remember, they aren't all super reliable, but recognize the trends in reviews and read the bad views even if you have a mostly good reviewed keyboard. One time, I purchased a keyboard that had phenomenal reviews, thousands of great reviews, but it only had about 5 or 10 negative reviews. I bought the keyboard and took it home, and on the 28th day of my 30-day window to return the keyboard, the, the uh, wiring in the back screwed up and I couldn't get the keyboard to ever read. Well, if I would have just looked at the five negative reviews on the page, I would have seen that every negative review was for the same reason, faulty wiring in the back of the keyboard. So it was misleading to, uh, to know that it, the keyboard had mostly good reviews because in my situation, if I would have just looked at the negative comments, I would have at least known that that was a possibility and that would be what I would look for. And it made total sense, guys. So look at those negative reviews, even if it's a good keyboard, quote unquote. Next, you want to look for the features, the visual look of the font. Some keyboards have cooler looking font than others. You might see this in the Black Widow or some of the Cooler Master keyboards or even some of the Gamdius keyboards. <clears throat> Uh, you might see LED lighting. Some of the keys light up from the inside of the baseboard. You might have wrist rests or extra plugins like USBs and headphone jacks. 
uh, as well as driver software. And this is huge, guys. I disqual I am uh, sorry. I disqualify a lot of keyboards due to their lack of driver software and technical support all the dang time. And lastly, you want to look at the price. <laughs> The most important one. In my experience with mechanical keyboards, I've tried well over 20 mechanical keyboards and I can say with confidence, expensive keyboards are rarely ever the better keyboard. So proceed with caution and don't believe the hype about expensive keyboards. Let's go to my journey through keyboards. Um, so I told you guys I own a lot of keyboards, uh, but let's see my journey to finding the best keyboard. Notice here on the left, as far as mechanical keyboards, this was my journey. I started off with the SteelSeries 7G, which the 6G V2 is the same keyboard. The 7 just has a gigantic wrist rest, and I think it has an extra plug-in in the back. It's virtually the same keyboard. I bought it. This is a black switch keyboard. It was priced at the time. The 7G was about 150 The 6 was 100 and it didn't really work for me because it was black switch so my fingers got a lot of wear and tear on it and it really was my first mechanical keyboard so I thought most of the excitement would be in the fact that it was a mechanical keyboard not a lot of really flashy looking mechanical keyboards came out when this keyboard was manufactured so it was kinda of just a good starting point for me but all in all it wind up just being kind of a more boring keyboard for me and the switch types didn't fit me but it is a good excellent keyboard um, for high people looking for higher level of resistance on the switches. Also, I switched over to the, at some point, Razer Black Widow. This is the keyboard that you will find most gamers at LANs using. It's blue switch, it has that nice sound, you know, you can always spot a blue switch keyboard a mile away. And this one is one of your cooler fonts, it has a slight thin wrist rest on it, um, and the fonts are just really kind of cool robotic looking and it sometimes has some lighting features on there um, People really seem to love this keyboard for me It just didn't work the buttons and the keycaps are a little bit smaller than standard uh, So I was I was over pressing buttons a lot and the blue switch itself didn't really um, Excite me too much. It was too loud uh, also, the baseboard of this one is glossy, so it, it got a lot of smearing and sweat marks on it from my wrists and stuff like that, so I had to move on. I then went to a Cooler Master Storm Quick Fire Rapid. This is a 10 keyless blue switch. Now you might be saying, Praise, why'd you stay with the blue switch? I think I was just attracted to the aesthetics of this keyboard. It was 10 keyless, the fonts were amazing, it was black on stealth gray, and you know, these blue switches were a little bit quieter in all fairness than the Black Widow keyboard, but I loved this keyboard. This was an excellent keyboard, but you know, over time, I just needed something a little bit more sturdy, uh, and I did find out in my investigation that I love the, um, the, the numpad and stuff like that, and then eventually, obviously, a uh, blue switch was out of my element. I, I think I was pushing towards the brown switch keyboard, which led me to the Cooler Master Storm Quick Fire Pro. This keyboard is extremely sturdy and it is brown switch, so mid, mid to high level resistance. It has the fantastic font on it and it also has um, uh, LED lighting. Now it is minimal, it's WASD and a few other additional keys on there, but you can switch up the brightness and the mode type. I believe they can pulsate. And this is hands down for the price point of 75 to 80 bucks. Mind you, the Razer uh, keyboard is about 80. Quickfire Rapids about 75, 80. This Quickfire Storm Pro, I believe, was 75, 80 as well. So it's very hard to find brown switch keyboards that have features and effects, um, and they are under $100. It's very rare to find stuff like that, uh, at least where I'm from. But this is hands down my favorite keyboard in the 75 to 80 dollar price range. It simply has it all. Um, I never thought I'd find a better keyboard than this, but I'll sh I'll tell you why in a little bit. So I would recommend all these keyboards, long story short. However, take consideration into the factors that I've gone over. Now let's go into our special bonus, which is our keyboards on the right. The broke gamer is not exempt from doing his or her research on cool gaming mechanical keyboard purchasing, even if you can't afford it. 
Take a look on the right here at some of the great choices for mechanical keyboard prototypes. How do I know about these super cheap keyboards? Well, when I was first looking at mechanical keyboards, I noticed on the Team Liquid forums that uh, they had a forum post on mechanical keyboards and keyboards in general. Uh, and I noticed that many people had posted old school keyboards that were like mechanical keyboards called clicky or old school tactile keyboards. I was fascinated with these and eventually one day at a thrift store I hit the jackpot when I found all the popular old school keyboards that I had done research on and I bought them all for a dollar. <laughs> now obviously they're not gaming keyboards but the manufacturers built these old school prototypes with a lot of similar goals in mind back in the day that make them far better than your average non-gaming keyboard and even some of the non-mechanical gaming keyboards that people offer these are way better and way cheaper. So I bought all these for a dollar minus the QSEN DT35 um, and let me just briefly explain why this keyboard is so popular. The QSEN SEM DT35 is hands down the most popular non-mechanical keyboard in the pro scene in Korea. I believe it's about $30, $40 and most Korean gamers just use this hands down. Now I have tried it at a LAN before. It's not too special to me, but I would say the resistance level in the keys are low mid, about uh, the same as kind of like a blue switch type as far as resistance. And it's about a $40 keyboard. Some of these other keyboards, you can find them online for anywhere between $5 to $20. But I highly recommend looking through thrift stores, as these were some of the most popular keyboards of the day. Um, again, the Lenovo pr Preferred Pro is more of your low, mid, and resistance level. comes with that little thin wrist rest, and it's probably one of the more colorful old-school keyboards. Then uh, the Keytronic EMS, in my opinion, is the equivalent to a brown switch keyboard. Um, it's very nice, low sound, stealthy. And then we have the Dell Quiet Key, which uh, I would probably liken to about a mid-level resistance and you can even hear a clicky sound with this keyboard it's in, the irony there is that it's called a quiet key and you can still kind of hear that but um you know these are all great keyboards alternatives for the broke gamer and guys pick one up you'll see what i'm talking about they are worth a go i've even tried these over my mechanical keyboards and they size up a little bit you know they're not a mechanical keyboard but for the price difference it's a great place to start now let's look at my latest keyboard. This is the Poseidon Z by TTE Sports by Thermal Take. And this is my new favorite toy. I will boast in this keyboard for quite some time, and it is awesome. This keyboard has 16.8 million LED customizable colors of all types. It has a brightness intensity adjustment. It has special lighting effects such as wave, pulsate, reactionary light up, the rainbow feature as you can see where you can press a key and the whole keyboard will light up uh, in a reaction style or you can have it static where it's just always rainbowy. You can also make like five to eight profiles so you can constantly switch between what type of lighting setup there are. Um, it's also a brown switch keyboard, kind of rare to find. Um, you can disable windows mode, removable keycaps, and then it has phenomenal, and I mean phenomenal driver support slash dynamic software where you can literally customize this keyboard to any style that you want. The only downer to this is that it didn't come with a wrist rest. I went out and bought a $4 wrist rest to attach to it. I'm a wrist rest fanatic. Um, but guys, this keyboard hands down is one of the best keyboards I've ever used in my life, and it is awesome. Please take a chance to look it up. It is phenomenal, and I believe it's $100 in most places. All right, guys. Here's where we wrap up the show, and I think I've brought up nearly everything there is to talk about in uh, our episode today. We've talked about why get a mechanical keyboard, the ultimate guide to picking up the perfect keyboard for you, my keyboard history and my recommendations. We looked over our bonus topic for the broke gamer, and then we looked at my favorite keyboard of all time. If you are interested in another mechanical keyboard other than the ones that I've shown you today, this isn't the end-all be-all of keyboard reviews, and I'm sure there are many great keyboards out there. Some brands that I didn't discuss today but are highly popular Popular, but a little uh, more rare to find uh, is Corsair, Ducky, Cherry, Zowie, Das, and Philco, which are pretty popular, but again, hard to find on the open market. 
I hope you can apply and learn from the things that we've talked about today and help you on your next keyboard purchase. As always, if you like my videos, please, please, please show support by checking out my stream and following me on Twitter at ASC Praise with two eyes. If you have any topics that you'd like me to do an episode on, please comment under the video and I'd love to hear what you have to recommend. Guys, again, I can't thank you enough for all your support. Love you guys. Please keep this scene hype. Let people know about StarCraft 2. Get hype about all these things that I'm talking about. They're really amazing facets of the gaming realm and it's just fun to talk about guys hopefully you can hear the passion in my voice I prepare a lot for all of these episodes so that they're consistent not laggy and interesting well guys that's all my time again this is ASC Praise and you are watching Praise TV the place for all things Protoss and StarCraft 2 have a great day peace